and what's going on it's your boy fontaine vip soundlab.com and today i want to take a look at setting up your plugin default locations i was just getting hit with a couple of questions on that now this is something that we covered in the past but there are members who are new so let's go ahead and i'll uh, take a look at that the first thing you want to do is you want to go under file you want to go under preferences now under preferences your preference menu comes up like so you have a couple of different attributes in this box for example general default library obviously plugins is where we're going to be going hardware as well as colors now when you click on plugins you immediately notice that my third party vendor plugins they show up here okay your native instruments plugins they show up on a different menu i'll get to that in a second and the cool thing about this manager here you also can set up your default configurations now you might ask what is that that's basically if you have a certain compressor limiter or whatever the case may be any vst plugin that you have scanned in you know you might have a certain tweaking that you might feel comfortable with whenever you um want to load up that plugin and when you do that the mx effects shows up here nine times out of ten i i use the starting points that are pretty much built into the plugins but at times you know you, you might have a certain tweaking that you might want to set up so that's pretty much how that gets set okay for example let's go under uh locations here and as you can see right here i'm using the public documents machine to library plugins folder because that's a folder that i rarely touch and i know nine times out of ten when i do drop my vsts in there uh, i rarely move that folder manipulate it alter it you know go in there take anything out because a lot of times i have other vst locations and i found myself moving plugins around a lot and i got tired of you know coming in here and then I'm like hey where's my plug in at so i i pretty much trained myself to the uh put them in here because this public document folder i like never go in there and when I do um, install a new plugin, I use that as a default location for it to be uh, installed. All right, so what happens is, let's say for example, if you had a different location, okay, you have an add icon here. So let's say for example, when I click the add icon, it brings up you know my hard drive, okay? And let's say I'm going, let's say on my local disk drive, and I'm going into a program files, Ableton, for example, under resources you have a plugin folder here now with ableton live i have ableton live 9 you have to create your own vst folder in there like when you install ableton live 9 that vst folder will not be in there what you have to do is you have to go under your resource folder and name a folder like vst or plugins i name mine plugins okay so let's pretend i was to click on where it says plugin here and i would click okay what happens is it's going to basically um add that location here and you would press rescan and when you press rescan, those plugins show up under here under the manager. So that's pretty much all that is. I mean, it's really not difficult. Um, if you're getting stuck with that, um, just send me an email and I'll try to help you out in another way. Maybe I can make another video to make that a lot more easier for you to understand. But that's pretty much how that works. And then to access them, you have what's called a channel property icon here and you have a plugin icon here. Now I cover these two um, icons in, in other tutorial videos on the site. So you might want to go over there and take a look at that. But for example, here I am, I'm on a sound level. You have three different levels. You have a master level, a group level, as well as a sound level. Now on the sound level, when you pull up your plugins, you have a plus icon here. Okay. Your native instruments ones are up, up here. Your external ones show up over here. Okay. Your native instruments ones are here. External ones are here. As you can see, the third party vendors that I scanned in, they show up here. The native instruments ones, they show up here. Okay. You also have some of the built in plugins that you do not have to do anything these come with machine factory stock okay so on a sound level basically what happens is if you load a plug in here it basically gets spread across the sounds each individual sound not the whole entire group if you want to move the whole entire group you have to use this little group tab here okay and again you pull up the plugins like so and once you select the plugin it manipulates the whole entire group no matter what you have on here OK, basically what you're looking at right now is basically an effects chain template that I had created. I'm going to uh, upload this to the site because this is a, um, also another great starting point to help you understand the effects chains because you can create your own effects chains. Native instruments has some really great ones built in also. Um, but I felt this was a great um, learning resource to learn how to get your effects chains um, set up. And I'll get into that in a minute also and why I feel that that's important because you have what's called, you have your projects up here. You can right click and save your groups from here. Okay. And you also can, you know, you can right click and you can save your groups from down here. Okay. And if you save from over here, you can save what's known as a machine um, 
project. Okay, so you got your projects and then you have your groups and I'll get into that in a second as well. But let's say for example, on group A, as you can see right here, I have an effects chain that I made. Here's where I would put my drum sounds. I called it add drums. Then I have add instruments here. This is for, you know, your VST, your AU plugins, etc. And right here, this is another uh, effects change that I labeled instrument effects change. So let's say if I was on a sound level here, I added a kick or, or something like that. Let's say I'm on this, this uh, 10 fingers of death drum kit. I select, let's say, death drum kicks. Okay, I grab a kick. I'll just mute that so I don't hear these sounds right now. And I, let's say I added this kick right here on drum one. Okay, and let's say I set the polyphony for one. Okay, under the sample, you see that the sample's right there. Okay, and I can, you know, manipulate the sample. And we have tutorial videos that covers how to, uh, you know, fade in, fade out sounds, copy and paste sounds, and time stretch, and all that good stuff also, or mapping your sounds from the zone. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and get to the, uh, the effects chain. Here's the effects chain. Now, basically, an effects chain is on each sound. Okay, I'm going in and I'm adding some plugins. Okay, here's the plugins. You can mute your plugins like so. You can turn them on like so. For example, I have a saturator on here. You know, I'm doing a basically factory stock because I want to make it in a manner that if you're at home and you load this uh, this template, everything will be in there. Usually, I, I use some third-party vendor plugins, but a lot of native instruments plugins are really awesome. All right, so here is an saturator. I have the mode set to tube. You have three different modes: it's classic, tape, and tube. Okay, and I turned up the bass just a little bit. 87% and I just barely bumped the gain just 1 dB you know I felt that was a good little starting point for a drum okay I had I put an EQ on there you know and I dropped the bass down and you know turned up the gain a little bit on that you know just, just you know just trying to put a more a little more sheen on the um the hi-hat I felt that was a good little starting point but again it's all preference you know you basically it's mandatory you have to come in here and tweak your sounds there's really no one set format how to mix snare reverb and I added other ones such as uh, plate reverb. And as you can see right here, basically everything that's under the uh, the built-in plugin menu here. Now I did that because a lot of times I don't want to run in here and grab an effect like this going through it. You know, I think, I think it's a lot faster and a lot easier if I have an effects chain where I have everything right here at my fingertips. Okay, so let's say I'm over here under drums and again here's my kick drum okay now you might want to say now how can i manipulate the kick drum to get the effects change from another group on that drum basically how it works is you want to go under your channel properties okay when you're under your channel properties output again i'm under sound because i just want to affect one sound individually okay here's your group destination here's your um your audio tab here here's your aux uh, icon here and your midi icon here I'm not worrying about MIDI right now or the audio right now. Basically, I want to use my auxes. Okay, you have your destinations here. Again, this screen basically is the same as on your mixer screen. Here's the kick drum. Now, if I was to select my inputs and outputs, my plugins, and my aux here, as you can see right here, here's where I can route. As you can see right here, I have it set to A1, which means group A1, sound one drums effects chain and then drum effects now you can come in here you can choose any effect that you have set up in there you know if i'm on a different sound for example let's say if i'm on the hi-hat this, this one right here was the hi-hat again i put a limiter on that one and a transient master there and what do i have on this one on the snare added my snare effect and again on this screen you can see that a lot better you can go through and actually see what is actually um, taking place as far as your plugins under your plugin uh, menu here. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much basically um, how that works in a nutshell. If you have any questions, just hit me up. Now, your instruments again, you can imagine how that would work the same. Okay, again, let's say if these were instruments that I had, let's say here I had a uh, I don't know contact or a Nexus 2, or whatever the case may be, again, it works the same. You have a master, a group, and a sound level. And again, if you want to get those routed, again, here's the effects chain where I set up some um, some instrument effects, such as chorus, flanger, 
uh, Resicord and you know some of the, the nice plugins that's built in that comes with the uh, machine software again you'll go back to channel properties you know and you will go under to the group that had your um, actual instruments and again again not worrying about audio or MIDI you'd worry about your auxes here and for example let's say if I had an instrument here and I wanted to you know select whatever effect I want to you know I want to add on to it whether it be a phaser resicord EQ etc etc so that pretty much is how that works you know it, it might sound a lot more complex than it is but it's actually not it's it's actually really really easy and over here I just you know set up some um some external outputs you know that's where that's when your audio will come into play you know like for example if you wanted to set up certain inputs or if you want to set up certain outputs okay that's basically how that would work all right now in this part of the video let's take a look at actually getting it set up manually because I'm sure that there's someone out there who may not have an effects template offhand they might need to know how to get that set up and it's really faster than you think so for example let's go up under let's say uh, a project here or maybe I'll use a group um, now nah, I'll use a project all right let's go ahead and jump on under some linked and layered projects uh, let's go ahead and select it's like one of my newer ones here let's do the 10 fingers of death all right now the 10 fingers of death demo comes up like so and again you could download this uh, off the website and let's say for example I wanted to have an effects chain set up on this kick where I don't want to manipulate the whole entire group or I don't want to use a plugin on this particular group for example you know I might have a couple of kicks in here where I want to send these kicks you know it's just a lot faster than just sitting here going plug-in after plug-in after plug-in after plug-in you know I think it's a lot easier when you do use an effects chain but that's just my opinion so you just need a blank group and again under your channel properties and again um, this is where you're basically um, gonna set it up so for example let's say we were to use I don't know what, what should we grab here let's let's grab a transient master let's use that let's say we want to make this effects chain to be a transient a transient master effects chain okay so now we have that set up and then let's say we want to do another one uh, let's say a compressor let's add that and then down here let's say we'll add uh, I don't know we'll add a limiter here all right so we just got three a transient master a compressor and a limiter all right so now what we'll do is we'll go back to our little drum kit here and again I know you remember from the first part of the video yep you guessed it you got to be under your channel properties okay and again we're not worrying about audio or MIDI right now we want to be under the aux tab and again this tab works exactly the same as on the mixer you know if you want to do it from here that's up to you as you can see right there there's our compressor our limiter and our transient master let's say on the first one I want to select a transient master for whatever reason and again if I go here you see that it's set up here also okay so if I wanted to you know route both of these kicks to the same transient master that's basically how that would work and you also have a second auxiliary here you know maybe on this kick I want to have something a little bit extra on it maybe I want to add I don't know whatever a compressor limiter or whatever you know again you have a second auxiliary here again which is going to manipulate this kick a lot more than it's going to manipulate that kick so yeah so that that's pretty much how that works I mean that's all it is fam I mean I know some of the members who, who have been signing up you guys are new and you know I'm breaking it down pretty much um the most basic and simplest ways I could think right now you know but if it's not jazzing in your head with this tutorial video just let me know I'll make another one and maybe I can figure out another way to make another video to make it a lot more easier uh, to explain. So again, you just need a blank group. You set up your uh, your effects on the, on that blank group. Again, using this, this plugin icon here. Okay, you go through each sound and you add, you know, whatever effect you want to add. Okay, then on your actual group of sounds that you want to manipulate. Again, on the sound level. Now again, it works on all levels. It could be a group level. A master level or sound level but for this particular situation I'm just using a, uh, a sound level example the group level example it basically would be the same thing it's it's just um it works just a little bit different you know for example 
let's say you grabbed, I don't know, let's say a limiter, okay? Nine times out of 10, this is something that you would not wanna do, but this limiter would affect this whole entire group of sounds like that, okay? So if you're like me, I like to get a lot more control over my sounds, um, but that's just me. You know, I like, I like individual control over each sound. So that's why I felt that that template was a, you know, a nice starting point, you know, for somebody who's new and you can actually see how it gets set up. And you also could take a look at some of the native instruments ones also, because, you know, when you're going through the native instruments library, a lot of times you could find out and see exactly, you know, how they're setting things up and how they're going about it. So yeah, man, that's pretty much it, man. It's your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Be sure to come by the website. Uh, we do free machine 2.0 tutorials, or I should say 2.x, as we're continuing with the updates. And we do not charge any monthly fees. Um, we have a lot of free controller editor templates, templates, session files, such as this one right here. I'm gonna uh, upload on the site. You know, we give away free monthly goodies each month, free drum kit sounds, and you know, free drum kit packs, and yeah, man.